Hi everybody, I wanted to show you an interesting interaction that I found online and how it integrates into Canvas. So I was creating this profile page, I have some education and teaching philosophy background, and then I had some personal interests as well. And what I wanted to include is some kind of slideshow. Now you could use Storyline or iSpring or some kind of e-learning tool to create this, and that would probably be a really good approach. But I was just curious what I could find online, and this is what I found. So I have a slideshow down here and I can navigate. There's an animated effect. I have some text right here, some captions, and that way I can just showcase some pictures that I chose. And then there's thumbnails down here that I can you know, indicate to go to one or the other. So I really like this transition and it's very clean. It renders well in Canvas and I want to show you how I did this. And to do this, I used a third party tool. This is called imagesidermaker.com. And it's a free tool. It's not anything that you download onto your computer. You just work right on the browser, right on the web, and then you can download your interaction and upload it into Canvas. And so it looks pretty complicated right here, but it's, it's not too bad and it's really actually fun to explore. And so here's a demo slideshow and I can click play and it'll scroll through automatically, you know, through a sequence, a timed sequence, and you can determine the timing. Or I can manually go through and I can click on the little icons at the bottom or I can click on the chevrons to navigate that way. And so it's a really interesting tool. I'm not going to go over an in-depth overview of all of the features here. You can go on to imageslidemaker.com and you can upload your own pictures and then you can explore all of these options. But there's a lot of interesting things going on here. Pretty much everything here can be customized, including the chevrons. I can have the chevrons be arrows or pointed arrows if I wanted. I can have them different sizes. Right now it's kind of a semi-circle. I can create circles or squares and I can even have an entire bar so that they click on the whole side and then they can navigate. You can change the various radio buttons, um, the transitions. It can go from smooth and sliding from one to the other to more of a fading action to zooming, which would look something like this. So various effects. And then what do you want it to do when it runs through the sequence from beginning to end? Do you want it to play once? Do you want it to play once and then rewind back to the first slide? Or do you want it to be looping? How fast do you want the transitions to go? What do you want the radio buttons to look like? They can be square, they can be rounded, or even circles. There's just a lot going on here. And you can customize the captions as well. And so you can customize the fonts, the font sizes, and finally, you can even change the dimensions of the entire thing. Now, by default, if I hop over here, these images are cropped. And so I'm taking either the middle, the top, or the bottom portion of the images. And so you can just choose how you want that. But you can also change the entire dimensions. I can change the height. And you can see how that changes the layout of the slideshow. I can make it really narrow, for example. And I can choose that by also typing in the values there. Right now I have square corners. I can have that be rounded or very rounded. So there's a lot to play around with here. And they have a write-up of how to get started and how to utilize all of these functions down here. And so that's just an overview of what we're looking at. Now let's look at how do we get this into Canvas. What I'm going to do is once I have all of these settings the way that I want them, I'm going to download the zip and that downloads a zip file onto my computer. And this I can upload into Canvas. Now we're going to want to change the HTML, but let's just upload it as it is and see how it looks. Because I have a course here, I'm going to create a folder called Slideshow. And I'm just gonna drag and drop the folder right into the Slideshow. And I'll want to expand it. And then when I click on the folder, everything is unzipped. And the files that I'm concerned about are this HTML file right here called example.html and then ism, which is a folder that has all of my assets. And just to clean things up a little bit, I'm going to select these two things and I'm going to drag them right into that slideshow folder. And then I'm going to delete this folder right here just to tidy things up a little bit. All right, so now I have my HTML. I have this called ism. Uh, before I can use it, I'm going to go ahead and publish it. And I'm going to say that I've obtained the rights to use this file. All right, now this HTML file, that's what I'm going to put onto my Canvas page. And I'm going to go ahead and right click and copy the address. If I hover over, you can see the address in the lower left hand corner. And I need to make a note of that so that I can use that in an iframe. So we're going to go over here to slideshow and I'm going to go to the HTML editor. Now I have some code that I'm going to be using. I'm putting in an iframe and then the source is 
this code right here, which is my institution, and then the course number files, and then I need to know that file number that I want, and then slash download. And then I put a width of 900 and a height of 405, and that's gonna really depend the width and the height on whatever you have set for the dimensions of your interaction. So now let's paste that code that I just copied over there because I want to know the number of the file right here. So I'm gonna take this number and I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to replace this with that number right there. And let's give that a try, see what that looks like. All right, so we're getting there. We can see the interaction, but you can see these scroll bars. I wanna get rid of the scroll bars for one. And then by default, it gives you a lot of this text right here. And I want to delete that. And we're actually going to delete that in the HTML file. And then I'll just re-upload that. All right, and so here's how I would do that. I went and extracted the file that I downloaded, and so it's this folder called Image Slide Maker, and what I want is this HTML file right here, example.html, and you can rename that to whatever you want. But what I want to do is open it with some kind of editor. I'm gonna use Notepad. I just wanna to get to this HTML code right here. So here I can edit some things, like my title. I can put it as a, you know my slideshow. You're not gonna to want to change any of the CSS here or any of the script but this stuff is fair game, all of this HTML right here. And so you'd wanna keep this intact. Right here, this is your caption. We created the captions in the actual web editor view, but if you wanted to change those afterwards, then you could change that right here. You could just change the words like that. So those are your captions. And then what I'm going to do is, this is the actual slideshow right here, and I'm just gonna delete everything after the slideshow. So I'm gonna delete this hyperlink. I'm gonna delete all of these words right here and I'm just going to keep the slideshow interaction. And then I'll go ahead and save that. And now I have an updated HTML file, and so I'm going to go back to Files right here, and I'm gonna drag and drop and copy that HTML file, and it's gonna say, hey, there's already an HTML file with this name. Do you wanna replace the existing one? And yeah, I want to replace it. I don't want two different copies. I just want the same copy. So I'll go ahead and replace that. So now it's updated. And so now let's go back to this page and we're gonna refresh and see if that gets rid of all of the text down there. And so, yep, now all I have is the slideshow, but you can see that there's still a little bit of give from the top and the bottom, left and right. Either I could go back to the image slider and slideshow maker and I can adjust the height and the width. I think that easier, I'm just going to tinker around with the HTML on the canvas page. Right now I have that set to 900, so let's make that 925 and 405 didn't seem to be enough, so let's see what 415 looks like. I'm just gonna be tinkering around. Go ahead and save that. And it looks like we're just about there. The width is good. There's still a little bit of height. I need just a few more pixels of height for this interaction. And so let's see, I did 415. Let's see what 425 looks like. And there we have a pretty clean interaction. And so I can shuffle around left and right. I can juggle down here. Now if you wanted to center it, we can see about centering. And you can do that in the rich content editor. I just go over here and center and save. What that's gonna do is it's going to create a paragraph and it's gonna text align the paragraph as center. The iframe sits in there. And in case you're curious, we have this data-api, all of that stuff. I didn't put that in there. Canvas automatically puts that in there. But what I did is I wanted to make sure that this code is correct, including the file number, which is unique to that one HTML file and located in this course, in this instance of Canvas. And so that's what I did. And then I just chose the height and the width. And then we'll press save. And now I have a centered slideshow. Now, one thing you want to be mindful of is um, I set a fixed width and a height. And so I don't know if this is gonna look great on mobile. It probably isn't going to look super great on mobile. And so it's just something to be mindful of. But if you just want a purely decorative slideshow that it doesn't really matter about the content and it being accessible, then this is a fun way to create such an interaction. So have a fun time exploring that and make your own slideshows. Visit the website howtocanvas.com for a write-up of this tutorial. And as always, Happy Digging and Morning!